Let's look today at how we would sketch derived functions. So here I have my original function, y equals f of x, and to sketch the derived function I'm just going to follow my nice little set of rules that I've got here. The first thing that I'm going to do is know that maximum or minimum points are where we would cut the x-axis. Now that should make sense to us because if on the original function we've got a maximum or a minimum point, we know that the gradient at that point, so y equals f prime of x, the gradient would be zero. So in this case, this point is going to be a crossing point or a root on our derivative. Next, points of inflection. Points of inflection, well I've got a point of inflection here and that's going to just touch the x-axis at this point. Now we consider positive and negative gradients and we note that for this question we aren't dealing with asymptotes. So thinking about my graph in three distinct sections. For the first section the gradient here is positive but the value of that gradient is getting smaller. So on my graph the gradient is positive, so here I have a positive number and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Now I consider the next section between these two points, so between my next two zeros. Well here the gradient becomes negative, it gets larger to a point, but then it gets smaller again. So the gradient is negative, it gets larger to a point, and then becomes smaller again. Now at my point of inflection I said I touched the axis, because actually what happens past this point is that the gradient carries on being negative. It starts off being shallow negative but then becomes steeper and steeper and steeper. So it starts off being a little bit negative and then the gradient becomes more and more and more negative as we move through. Let's have a look at that in three more examples. So in each case I'm just going to follow my nice little set of rules. So starting off with I'm going to look for turning points. So turning points, I've got one here so I know that that's going to be a crossing point, turning point here will be a crossing point, turning point here will be a crossing point. I haven't got any points of inflection, I haven't got any asymptotes. Now I consider the gradient on each of my one, two, three, four sections this time. For the first section, the gradient here would be positive but getting smaller. Positive but getting smaller. For the next section, the gradient's negative, it gets larger and then smaller again. The gradient's negative, it gets larger and then smaller again. For the next section, my gradient is positive. It's positive and gets larger, but then it becomes smaller back down to zero. It's positive, becomes larger, but then gets smaller back down to zero again. And then for my last section, the gradient just becomes more and more negative. The gradient just becomes more and more negative. And this is what we should expect, because what we have in this original function is a quartic function, or a function that's something to do with the power of x to the power of 4, and we know that if we differentiate that, we're going to get a cubic function. What's more, we know that this is actually a negative quartic function, and here we have a negative cubic function. So this should all make sense. Right, now let's look at how we might involve asymptotes. So we go through our same process. We haven't got any maximum or minimum. We have got a point of inflection, so let's say that the point of inflection is here, so we're going to touch the axis at this point, and that's enough. Now, x, uh, x asymptotes will remain x asymptotes, and the reason for this will become clear now. The gradient of a horizontal line, which is pretty much what we've got here, the gradient of a horizontal line is zero. So this is going to be a little bit more than that, so ever so slightly positive, getting more positive. And what happens, the gradient becomes more and more and more and more and more positive until it becomes almost this vertical line. So the value of that gradient is going to get larger and larger and larger and larger and larger, matching up with the asymptote that we've got here. On the other side of my asymptote, the gradient is now negative, but it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller or shallower and shallower, should we say. So it's negative gradient that gets more and more and more shallow. So the value of that gradient decreases. Now we know that points of inflection touch the axis because on this side the gradient is going to decrease and decrease and decrease and decrease and get larger and larger and larger and larger. So there we go. And that's the sort of thing that we have going on here. Final example. This time I've got a y asymptote involved same thing, I look for my 
maximum and minimum points because I know that this minimum point here will be a crossing point Theory me I know that this minimum maximum point here will be another crossing point and then I consider what's going to happen now with gradients so to start with on the first section of my curve the gradient is negative getting smaller the gradient is negative getting smaller now my gradient quickly becomes positive and then back down to zero it quickly becomes positive and then back down to zero then at this point the gradient starts off being very negative but then gets less and less negative as time goes by the gradient starts off being very negative but gets less and less uh, negative as time goes by and it tends towards the axis so that's why we have this y asymptote here that remains a y asymptote on our derived function but notice that it's not in the same place However, the x asymptotes will always be in the same place because if the function isn't, uh, isn't defined at the x value, it won't be defined for the derivative value. Not a nice topic, but if we go through it in steps, we should just about get there.